Uh, good afternoon. It's my pleasure to be here with you and to share with you some ideas about museology, but in particular about the communication dimension of museum work and reflection on that from a more theoretical perspective. And when I looked at my notes this morning, I was a little bit afraid that I would not make it easy for you. I mean, we have to work very hard the coming hour or so. Uh, not just me, and not just the interpreter, but you as well. Uh, there will be a lot of slides with text and diagrams, and so it will not be easy. Nevertheless, I hope that I will be able to present to you some, some ideas and be able to you to connect some of these ideas reflecting contemporary thinking about the role of museums in society, the specificity of that uh, role. And perhaps we find a way to communicate later with you some of the sources that I have uh, been using in this, this lecture and maybe we find a way to make available uh, uh, text uh, uh, web resources uh, so to substantiate uh, what I will be uh, uh, telling you. And maybe <coughs> it's too complex, maybe I'm not always able <coughs> to clarify my point of view, but one thing for me is essential. I think essential is that we, as museum professionals, believe in what we do, what we do, and that we are be able to be enthusiastic about our own work, because beyond all the concepts, beyond all the models that I present to you, beyond the rationalism that is part of museology, there's also a sort of romantic uh, dimension in, in museology. I think that uh, uh, what uh, is the core of our profession is our own fascination of what, what we are doing and the fascination that we would like to share with our audiences. I think there is some magic in what we are doing and this is magic, this fascination that I think is important in our profession. Without fascination, without magic, there is no profession. And that's why I would like to show this slide as first slide that I think all of you recognize. And I'm sure, I'm sure these visitors of this, what may be the first museum here in this country, that these visitors were very thrilled by what they were seeing, that they, that they experienced some of this magic. And I do not hope that the sort of professionalism that I stand for, the sort of professionalism that is behind my slideshow of today, that is destroying this magic. I think we should, in some way or another, we should keep this magic, this, this, this fascination. So I'm so happy that this museum is pre preserved. That is one of the few examples of a musealized museum. I have not yet been able to visit it, but I hope to be there very soon. Because it's, to some extent, part of my reflection on what is important. And my professional ambition has always been, and that is also part of the ambition of the museology chair in, in, in Vilnius, uh, to identify relevant ideas and practices and how these ideas have been uh, developed in the past. I would like to assemble them, as I will do in this lecture, uh, collect these ideas from different uh, uh, sources, and to mix them, to critically review them, and present them in an applicable way. That is my idea of museology. Museology is a theory, maybe an academic discipline, there's a whole a discussion about that, as, as you know, but uh, for me, all these ideas should be related to practice. If we are not able to relate to practice, if you're not able to help 
uh, museums to develop themselves, uh, then well, we, we have a problem. And what I would like to do uh, uh, here um, today, but in particular in, 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 in Vilnius, is to, um, to collect these ideas from this international professional uh, uh, discourse and to present them in an applica uh, applicable way, uh, applicable to the Lithuanian uh, uh, realities. Now, the last thing I will not do today, because who am I to have an opinion about Lithuanian realities? I've been here only a month, and in this month I've seen, I think, eight museums in Lithuania. So it's not, I think, my role at this very moment to judge Lithuanian uh, uh, reality, uh, but I hope that I uh, will be able to present these ideas in some some way that is uh, uh, that may be useful to you. But I have to clarify my position. I have a clear position when it comes to museology and museums. And if you do not share this, then you this this vision, then you may not be able to connect with uh, what I would like to uh, show to you uh, today. Um, my position in museology, my uh, 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 perspective eh, on the role of museums is a very particular one and it's connected with an international uh, discourse as reflected, for example, in this definition. Um, this definition is from the Canadian uh, Museums Association. I could have uh, chosen other definitions as well, but this particular definition of museums uh, is developed a few years ago by the Canadian Museums Association. It very much reflects how I perceive museums. Museums as institutions created in the public interest. A museum engage their visitors, foster deeper understanding and promote the enjoyment and sharing of authentic cultural and natural heritage. Museums, of course, museums acquire, preserve, research, interpret, and exhibit the tangible and intangible evidence of society and nature. As educational institutions, museums provide a physical forum for critical inquiry and investigation. And the last sentence is very important for me. And the last sentence is uh, uh, very much at the core of my vision on museums as educational institutions, uh, providing a forum for critical inquiry and investigation, which is also reflected in one of my favorite mission statements. Uh, I have used it very often in, in lectures uh, 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 abroad and, and, and here, a mission statement by the Tyne and Weir Museums and Archive in uh, Newcastle, the United Kingdom. A very beautiful mission. Our mission, they say, and also my vision on the role of museums, our mission is to help people determine their place in the world and define their identities. So, enhancing their self-respect and the respect for others. So for me, when it comes to uh, what a museum is, well, a museum has, in my opinion, three basic functions. It's preservation, it's research, and it's communication. Uh, communication, for me, is the core uh, of the responsibility, the social responsibility of, of museums. And it is sometimes uh, uh, said, as a sort of uh, provocation, uh, a museum should not have an educational service. A museum is an educational service. So I'm not denying the important role of educators in museums, uh, but primarily a museum is an educational institution. And of course, a museum can do research and should do research. And of course, an important role of a museum is uh, uh, preservation. And the well, more sophistic version uh, of the three partite uh, responsibilities of museums in the right-hand uh, corner on, on the slide uh, is there to indicate that these functions are very much connected to each other. Uh, you cannot speak about communication in a museum without 
by integrating the reserves function and the preservation function. Of course, all these functions are very much connected. But the central focus of museums, I think, museums as social institutions, is on communication. And I de deliberately speak about communication. It could be repl uh, replaced by another word, but for the time being, I uh, prefer to use communication, which includes the exhibition work as well as educational activities. That, uh, for me, is, is integrated. And I do not want to separate educational work from exhibition work. Uh, more uh, than, than in the statement that a museum is educational, uh, I would like to emphasize the fact that um, an exhibition, uh, by definition, is educational work. And I would like to focus on this integrated perspective on communication. So I do not want to uh, uh, be more specific about educational programs as uh, programs with, with, with children and, and special uh, target groups. Uh, I'm very much aware of the, 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 the project Museum School Student in Lithuania, and I know uh, that the Orjara uh, uh, Museum uh, here uh, is involved in this, this project. I'm aware of that, but I do not want to speak about that. Uh, my perspective for today is a different one. I'm, I'm focusing, uh, I'm trying to focus on the uh, communicative role of museums as such. So basically, uh, from the perspective how the museum communicates to its uh, diversity of audiences through uh, the building and its uh, exhibitions. And taking uh, the exhibitions as a, a starting point, I think for me a very helpful tool to analyze uh, the specificity of the museum as a building and a museum as a collection of galleries. Uh, um, uh, uh, I found this uh, idea of heterotopia as introduced by Michel Foucault, his uh, French sociologist that you uh, probably are familiar with. I don't know if you're in, uh, familiar with this concept of heterotopia. It was introduced by him, I think it was a radio interview in 1967 and then published in 1984. You can uh, find French uh, text and uh, the um, English uh, translation, perhaps other translations as well, uh, on, 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 on the internet. And uh, I've, I found this very, very helpful, uh, conceptualizing the, the specificity of this situation of the museum presenting itself through uh, its permanent and temporary uh, exhibitions. And what Foucault uh, 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 defined as heterotopia uh, is that it is um, a, a, a place uh, uh, where uh, you can find a sort of expression of a collective mode of looking. Uh, museums as heterotopias, with the text of Foucault, uh, museums as heterotopias express the will to enclose in one place all times, while the place itself is outside the time. Uh, we step outside our own time, and in this uh, 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 place, uh, we find different uh, times connected. The heterotopias, uh, the museums, are capable of juxtaposing in a single real place several meanings that are in themselves incompatible. I think um, when you think about it, you can easily um, identify yourself with this, this point of view. Uh, uh, every object uh, has different meanings uh, every exhibition has different meanings and the uh, interesting uh, phenomenon in museums is that we are able uh, to combine these perspectives, combine this interpretation, combine these uh, meanings. And as such, uh, museums are instruments that provoke a mode of perceiving society's images. Images that are sharpened, blurred, warped, represented, contested, and in inverted. Museums have their own logic. Mu museum, as expressed in 
uh, the definition uh, of uh, Foucault, though I, he, do not, he doesn't explicitly refer to, to museums, but in this um, view of uh, uh, Foucault, uh, museums uh, are places with its own reality, its own logic. And as visitors, we have to surrender to this uh, logic. If you do not surrender to this logic, if you do not understand this logic, yeah, museums are weird places. Because it is authentic reality that we present, but at the same time, it's a constructed reality, uh, constructed according to certain rules, rules that are familiar with us, but may not be familiar with our visitors. Uh, for, uh, this is, I think, a good example of what I, I mean. Uh, we have our own logic. And of course, in this logic, uh, objects are precious and cannot be touched. Uh, but what does a bench or a chair mean when a relation with that chair or bench is based on a sort of visual mode of interaction rather than sitting on it. <clears throat> well, it, um, I think I'm, um, uh, I'm sure uh, uh, that you know what I mean since you're all professionals or uh, becoming uh, museum professionals. There's another aspect that I think is an important precondition of what I would like to present uh, uh, to you uh, this, this afternoon. Uh, the conditional access and boundaries. The heterotopias, and again I'm quoting uh, Foucault, the heterotopias main stabilizing technique is its continuous state of demarcation. And the museum is out isolated from the corrosive outside. And this demarcation is executed by a number of physical structures that are applied to the premises and its surroundings. But it's also evoked by rituals of passage that are applied to its visitors upon entering. Well, that is exactly what is happening. We require a certain ritual of passage in our museums. We enter the museum and, and there we have to pay an entrance fee. We have to leave our coats and our bags and our umbrellas and, 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 and then we proceed and we have to show the ticket and then we have to, uh, well, we follow this ritual which is uh, uh, similar to all museums but this ritual creates a, a barrier, uh, a barrier in the architecture, already before we enter museum, that there, there is this barrier that we have to conquer. I've been to all these museums, uh, no, all these eight museums in, in Vilnius, uh, and it's, this is not from Vilnius, but uh, maybe the museums uh, here in this town are different, uh, but do we feel welcome? Do we know that, that you can visit this building? But the doors are closed. And, and in this museum, in, in Berlin, uh, they had uh, this uh, sign that this is the entrance, uh, that you are allowed to, 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 to enter. But when we enter, do we feel welcome? No, we don't feel welcome, because we are now not allowed to do this. We are not allowed to do that. We are not allowed to do that. We are not allowed to bring our dogs here. Okay. It's understandable. We are not allowed to bring our mobile telephones, we are not allowed to smoke, okay? we are not allowed to eat, we are not allowed to make photographs. Are we allowed to do something? Well, this is this barrier. Yeah? We have to conquer this. Yeah? We have to conquer this sign saying to you, well, actually, you should not come. Please stay outside. I worked in a museum, and I, 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 I can guarantee, maybe you have the same feeling, I like museums without visitors. They are so pleasant. But this is exaggerating. Yeah? It is almost telling, please stay out. And this is a sacred place, only, only for us people like, like we. So, of course, uh, maybe I'm exaggerating, but I don't think I'm exaggerating. Um, so, of course, in our contemporary thinking in museology, 
right? we try right, to, to, to develop a perspective right, that goes in the other direction. And present day uh, thinking and uh, present day uh, ways to go from theory to practice may be summarized in some basic uh, concepts such as critical museology and social inclusion. I think the present day international museology discourse is haunted by this uh, 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 concepts. You know, wherever you uh, look at publications on present day uh, uh, discourses, it's about uh, critical heritage studies or critical um, uh, museology, critical museum studies, and about uh, social inclusion. So, what I um, will uh, tell you is also very much informed by this critical uh, thinking. Now, this critical thinking goes in different uh, directions. Uh, one connection with the yeah, concept of critical is uh, with critical uh, pedagogy. Uh, pedagogy. Uh, Paolo Freire is uh, a key person in the theory and practice of critical uh, uh, education, critical pedagogy. And I'm mentioning it here because uh, in, in re reflecting on the social role of museums, reflection on educational role of museums, uh, many of his ideas are being implemented and are being developed. And I'm also mentioning in particular because the ICOM, uh, International Council of Museums, will meet this, this year, this summer, in uh, Rio de Janeiro in, in Brazil. And I'm sure uh, that in nine out of ten presentations during this conference, there will be a reference to Paolo Freire. Uh, because the Brazilians are completely into Paolo Freire. Maybe not so much in the museums, but in the rhetoric. Uh, and the International uh, uh, Committee of Training uh, have dedicated its uh, uh, sessions on the application of these ideas of Paolo Freire and others into museum practice. I'm mentioning post-critical museology because uh, a very interesting book was published uh, a few months ago at the end of last year. Um, uh, Andrew uh, Dudney from um, London and uh, he used the term post-critical uh, because he uh, was a little bit tired of all this critical discourse in English, British uh, academia, uh, analyzing museums but not making the connection uh, between an academic analysis and museum practice. So post-critical in uh, his definition is stepping out of this academic discourse and become practical, uh, doing critical work in uh, uh, museums partly using these uh, ideas of Paolo Freire and, and others. And that very much connects with uh, uh, one of the most important um, um, ideas as introduced in the international discourse, in particular uh, the British discourse, uh, social inclusion. One of the key personalities uh, uh, introducing this concept and uh, working on this concept is uh, Richard Sandel. Uh, he used to be a uh, director of uh, the Department of Museum Studies, uh, now School of Museum Studies uh, in, in, in Leicester. And that is one of the major centers where uh, they have developed this, this idea of social inclusion. You may be familiar, and if not, I. I, I uh, strongly recommend you to read this book, uh, Museums, Equality and Social Justice, and uh, Museums, Prejudice and the Reframing of Difference, two books edited by Richard uh, Sandel. Uh, social inclusion is about uh, access, uh, representation and participation. Uh, access is not just uh, opening the doors, uh, access has all, uh, also this dimension uh, of uh, uh, language in a literal sense, but also in a sort of metaphorical sense. Uh, the approach, uh, is the approach understandable for a wide variety 
of uh, uh, groups in, in the society. And the representation, do people feel represented? Do this wide variety of communities in society, do they feel they are represented? Are their ideas, uh, their experiences represented in uh, the galleries? And uh, uh, participation, I come back uh, uh, to that. So uh, these concepts, uh, a critical attitude, but critical in the sense of uh, applying uh, these critical theories uh, in, into uh, critical philosophy in, into museum practice, and this idea of uh, social inclusion um, are uh, very important preconditions uh, for any reflection on the educational role of uh, uh, museums. But about the terminology, uh, I, I have used uh, education, educational role, educational service, education, uh, uh, several times during the past few uh, uh, minutes. Um, but in the internationalist core, I think there is a notable shift from education to learning. Most of the present day publications about learning, and I think uh, the, the, shift, uh, the shift of terminology is uh, very important uh, because learning uh, uh, presupposes an sort of active role uh, of the learner and education is more well addressing the active role of the educator. Uh, education is more that I want to teach you, that I want to tell you something, but I think is important for you to know. Learning implicitly uh, says that you decide what is important to you and you decide your own strategy uh, to get the information. And um, uh, throughout this uh, uh, lecture, I would like to propose that uh, from education uh, we move to learning and from learning we move uh, to experience. I think uh, conceptualizing museum communication I think should center on the concept of experience. And as I will try to explain to, uh, to you, learning is part of experience, but I think a museum visit is much more than, than uh, uh, learning. And I, I do not want to isolate learning from other dimensions of uh, experience. But about learning, uh, if you are uh, interested about conceptualizing uh, uh, learning, uh, I um, would like to uh, uh, refer to description of uh, learning as used uh, in the United uh, Kingdom, uh, saying learning is a process of active engagement with experience. It's, uh, referring to what I just said a minute ago. Learning is a process of active engagement with experience. So the overall concept is experience. People are experiencing something and in this experience uh, they learn. Learning is what people do when they make, uh, want to make sense of the world. And it may involve or involves and the development or deepening of skills, knowledge, understanding, values, ideas, and feelings. It's not just knowledge. I think there's a misunderstanding of the, of the past that education or learning is about knowledge. It's also about understanding, but it's also about values, ideas, and feelings. And here, I think museums can develop uh, uh, much more ideas um, with more practices uh, than they usually uh, do. Well, effective learning uh, leads or may lead to change, uh, development, and the desire to learn more. This description is uh, from a very um, uh, inspiring uh, website, uh, Inspiring Learning uh, uh, for All. Um, well, uh, as you notice, the, um, the lecture is recorded and will be uh, shown on YouTube in a few days, and then you can check the slides and copy um, the URL of the uh, website, Inspired Learning for All. I think it's a very inspiring website with a lot of very useful information and uh, not just conceptualizing, but uh, giving you the tools uh, to be more precise in what learning means in general, but what learning could mean for your uh, specific institution. 
it, uh, it defines generic learning outcomes. It also defines generic social outcomes, but they are less popular. But the generic, generic learning outcomes, this model, is uh, very popular and don't, don't want to go into too much uh, detail. Uh, but uh, it is a tool uh, to define uh, the outcomes of the process and what you can contribute uh, to this uh, process in terms of skills, attitudes and values, enjoyment, inspiration, creativity, activity, behavior, and progression, knowledge, and understanding. And just to give you an idea, just, just an idea, yeah, I won't go into detail. So knowledge and understanding means knowing what or about something, learning facts or information, making sense of something, deepening understanding, but also how museums operate. Another example about attitudes and values, opinions about ourselves, opinions or attitudes towards other people, increasing the capacity for tolerance, very important. Attitudes toward an organization, positive and negative attitudes in relation to an experience. Well, in this way, just as a sort of introduction about the methodology, in, in which way you can, in this way you, you, you can be very specific in uh, what you want to achieve. Uh, what, what, what is your role? Can you pinpoint uh, your role in, in society as educational institutions? Are certain learning outcomes more important to you as others? And how uh, does your uh, uh, audience perceive uh, uh, this? But behind it is a theory of learning. Uh, learning as an active process controlled by the learner. George Hein, very important influential uh, person in the field of theory of museum education, presented this uh, diagram making a distinction between learning theory and the theory of, of knowledge. And the more traditional position here is that there exists an independent, uh, of, uh, there exists a body of knowledge independent of the knower, of the, uh, the knower. Yeah, so it's the, the upper position, and that learning is adding uh, uh, to that. And the traditional museum, as the traditional lecture, and I must admit, as the situation here and now, is very much in the <coughs> upper left-hand uh, uh, corner. George Hines own. Uh, ideas about uh, uh, museum education uh, is in the lower right hand uh, 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 corner. Uh, the constructivist ideal of learning, the constructivist museum based on constructivist uh, 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 ideas that the learner constructs knowledge from experiences and that knowledge by definition is constructed by an individual and in uh, a social uh, context. This is, uh, this constructivist museum is a, a rather a radical uh, position. Most of our work will try to balance uh, between the traditional approach as George Hein has um, uh, defined as the systematic museum and the constructivist museum. But uh, as, as a point of reference, as, as an idea uh, to reflect upon this uh, constructivist uh, museum is, I think, a very relevant one. And most of these ideas that I have presented and will uh, present um, in the coming half an hour or so uh, relate to this uh, uh, idea of, uh, of, of learning, uh, that the learner uh, takes initiatives uh, what he she uh, wants to learn and how. So that is behind uh, this, this model of the exchange process, exchange process between the museum and the visitor. And not by coincidence, this is from a marketing specialist, Neil Cutler. You may be familiar uh, with the work of uh, 
uh, uncle and nephew uh, uh, Cutler uh, on museum marketing. Well, museum marketing is not far from my perception of, of, of museology. It is very much uh, connected. And I think the core of this uh, 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 diagram is that there is a variety of museum offerings and there's a variety of museum expectations. And there's a process of transaction. Uh, um, a visitor invests it, uh, its time, uh, money, uh, comfort to visit the museum and expects a benefit. And there should, of course, be a balance uh, between the investment and the benefit. But for the, at the same time, a museum also uh, uh, invest. The museum invests in its exhibitions and uh, other uh, facilities and expects a benefit uh, from the visitor. And there should be a balance in this transactional process, this exchange process. If there is no balance, we have a problem, I think. So we have to understand uh, what does the visitor expect? What does the visitor expect when he uh, uh, makes a decision to go to the uh, uh, museum? And what does the museum offer? And does it offer means uh, the expectations? And I'm very much in favor of a sort of holistic or organic approach to these museum offerings. Uh, the designed environment in the collections uh, is just is only a part of what uh, uh, museums offer. Uh, museums offer much more than exhibitions, uh, uh, educational programs, events, uh, but uh, shop, uh, uh, restaurant, uh, other services, there are a lot of services, and they all play a role in satisfying the expectations of a museum, the explicit and implicit expectations of, of a museum. On our way here from Vilnius uh, to Chaudier, uh, we discussed in the, in the car about uh, uh, this, and I was uh, telling about my experiences in the museums in, 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 in Vilnius. And of course, here all the museums are better than the museums in Vilnius. I'm sure about that. Uh, but I was visiting these eight museums, and there was just one museum where I could find something to drink. One out of eight museums, there was something to drink water. Well, at least that was something. Yeah. For me, it's impossible. A museum without coffee, it's impossible. Well, of course, I'm exaggerating. But uh, uh, a colleague of mine in Amsterdam is doing a PhD on visitor satisfaction. And he found that coffee, a restaurant, shop, very important for visitor satisfaction. Of course, of course, it's important uh, what the museum shows, but uh, much more plays a role in how the museum is perceived as a very satisfactory uh, experience, a satisfactory environment. Also, staff plays a role. Uh, we were making jo uh, jokes in, in the car about uh, the security staff in museums. Um, I do not want to uh, be accused uh, uh, for unfair uh, references to the staff in museums here in this part of the world, uh, but they're not always very friendly. And this unfriendliness of these old ladies in the galleries following me because very often I was the only visitor in the museum, and so these old ladies were following me as if I was a criminal. It doesn't make me feel happy. Well, I'm used to it, so it's, it's okay, but it doesn't feel happy. And there have been many, many research projects finding out right, there's an experience of being happy, to, to feel comfortable in a museum. Very much depends on the staff, on the security staff, how they, how they behave. So it can be a very, very, very interesting exhibition, but maybe all these other elements of your experience destroy this and you go back home and say, oh, did you like this museum? No. 
So that's why I think we should look uh, at uh, uh, this exchange pro uh, uh, process uh, from a holistic, uh, integrated point of view. Because uh, 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 we can also say uh, something about uh, the visitor expectations and experiences. So the, uh, the, the basic notion, basic concept uh, for me uh, is experience. Uh, because we need to know what people experience, what they expect. Uh, we need to conceptualize experience and learning uh, uh, looking at objects, uh, reading text and exhibitions, is just one part of the experience, but also one part of the uh, expected experience. And the other elements, uh, uh, excitement, playfulness, contemplation, this is the same article by uh, Neil Cutler in Museum News already some years ago, but still, I think, uh, very relevant. This idea uh, of the a uh, uh, multitude of experiences is um, uh, elaborated and uh, giving a sort of theoretical basis by uh, uh, Joseph uh, Pine. Uh, Pine, I don't know if uh, he is known here, but he is extremely, extremely popular in the Netherlands. I think most of the museum directors have a copy of the book under their pillow, hoping uh, uh, that uh, their knowledge about uh, experience in the museum uh, being enriched. Joseph Pine is invited several times for conferences in the Netherlands and other uh, uh, countries. Um, his uh, first book, at least first book relevant uh, for us, is uh, The Experience Economy. He's an economist, but he suddenly uh, discovered that uh, much of his economical ideas can easily be related to and applied in museums that well, very soon after the publication of the book he was invited to a multitude of museum conferences. And, uh, uh, and then he discovered uh, uh, that authenticity plays an important role in experience. Uh, so he uh, wrote a second book a few years later about authenticity, uh, which also does not deal exclusively with museums, but obviously uh, very relevant for museums. And he uh, uh, created a model about e experience. And again, I just introduce it to saying that uh, there's a way of conceptualizing according to uh, uh, some ac access, uh, the, the way that the visitor is absorbed in the in, in environment and whether the visitor is passive and, and active. And uh, well, he wanted four E's, uh, so the terminology may not be very effective, but he speaks about entertaining experiences, educational experiences, aesthetic experiences, and escapist experiences. Showing uh, the full scale of experience, showing very clearly that educational experience or uh, learning, uh, 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 that it is one component of experience, but that there are other components, and together, uh, they make a sort of complete experience. And you may, uh, uh, your intention may be to go to a museum for one experience, but at the same time you have this ex other experience as, as, as well. And so these uh, experiences uh, may enrich each other when, as a museum offering those experiences, are you, uh, as you, when you are aware uh, of this mechanism and you can manipulate the situation in your uh, uh, museum, uh, bringing the visitor from one experience into another. But we need to go much deeper into uh, the learner, uh, the expectations of the learner, but also uh, how the learner learns, uh, the identity of the learner, is her motivations. And uh, two of the most influential authors in this, uh, John Falk and Lynn uh, Deking. You may be familiar with some of these publications. Uh, if not, uh, I, I think it's uh, uh, very interesting. Uh, one of the newest um, is uh, Museum Experiences, uh, Museum Experiences, uh, Museum Experience uh, Revisited. 
uh, the, the, the first major publication that had a tremendous influence worldwide is uh, Upper Left, uh, the museum experience. And, and uh, uh, last year, uh, the museum experience revisited but, but published. Uh, I think it's not a, a, a very um, a cheap uh, a book. It's maybe quite expensive, but I think worthwhile. worthwhile. It, it um, uh, explores uh, the, the model of interactive experience as uh, shown here on the right uh, side of the uh, slide. Um, interactive experience is the interaction between the physical context being the museum, uh, social context being the other people um, and uh, before and uh, during the museum visit and the uh, personal context. So in connection uh, with conceptualizing museum visit in terms of experience, it is important uh, to have a deeper understanding of this personal, personal context. Uh, who is this uh, visitor? Uh, and, and how does this visitor perceive the museum? And how uh, uh, does this uh, um, visitor uh, define uh, motivation, expectation, and, and, and how does the visitor define uh, a strategy to learn or to um, accumulate ac experiences? In the most recent publication, John uh, 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 Falk. Uh, introduced a completely new uh, uh, idea about identity-related mot motivations. Uh, he, gave, uh, he made a classification uh, of identities or identity-related motivations. This is very, very new. It's not yet very well dis dis discussed, and I uh, hesitate uh, uh, to give you uh, descriptions of all these different uh, motivations because I think at this very moment it is not important to go into detail about it but just show you the uh, methodology and the general uh, uh, approach uh, which is different from uh, other approaches until uh, now. And I think it is a very uh, interesting uh, approach and I think it will help us uh, to conceptualize uh, who is this uh, visitor uh, and, and, and how is this experience that we were talking about uh, influenced by the intentions, by the motivations of the visitor. And it is John Falk's strong belief uh, that we can predict uh, this experience uh, to a great extent if we know uh, 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 what uh, this uh, uh, visitor um, expects yeah, what his motivation is. As an, an, an facilitator, to give just one example, is somebody who uh, uh, very much um, expects sort of social outcome of the visiting. It, it's uh, somebody who goes to a museum because he, she uh, wants to show the museum to others, uh, children, for example, or, or relatives, or friends. Or, or, or guests. Yeah? So uh, the motivation to visit the museum is not in uh, a sort of uh, content-related interest. There's another interest. Contrary to the explorer, and the explorer in terminology of John Falk has a very personal interest uh, in the subject matter. So the explorers, the facilitators, the enter the museum uh, with different motivations, different expectations. And afterwards, they will reflect upon their experience and the satisfaction in completely different ways. The experience uh, uh, will almost be uh, complementary. Yeah, the experience uh, is completely different. Well, so, uh, 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 John Falk, again, uh, suggesting uh, to make this sort of uh, uh, Typology is the policy based on hundreds of interviews he had uh, with um, uh, museum uh, visitors, which connects very much with a more uh, a somewhat older approach uh, in, in reflecting on uh, learning in, in museums, uh, is based on the work of David Kolb. Uh, it's is still quite popular. It used to be extremely popular in my part of the, of, of the world. 
uh, many publications uh, uh, published about the application of Kolb's idea in, in museum work. Uh, David Kolb himself uh, comes from the world of education. He's not interested, never been interested in museums. And David Kolb himself never related his ideas to museums, but others have adopted his uh, ideas. And it, it basically about uh, 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 learning uh, uh, styles and uh, learning, uh, uh, learning strategies and types of learners. Uh, the learning strategies are for uh, watching, uh, uh, thinking, doing, uh, feeling. Uh, you can easily identify it. Uh, so according to Kolb, these are uh, the basic um, uh, uh, learning strategies, uh, how people learn. And so he defines within this framework uh, the ideal typical uh, types of learners. Uh, some people can be as learners defined as analytical, uh, seeking intellectual comprehension, while others are seeking personal meaning or seek solutions to problems. And you can find on the internet more explanations of that, and you can find a form, and you can uh, try to find out your own uh, learning style. Uh, just by filling in, say, oh, I'm learner type this, learning type that. And I think, I think that when we would do it here and now, that the majority of you would be somewhere in the upper right hand corner. I think, I think, that many of you are analytical by nature, seeking intellectual comprehension. Because that is usually what I see in, in, the, in the sphere of at least curators. Yeah? Educators may be a little bit different. And there are also, of course, gender issues, but I don't want to, uh, to make it too complicated. Uh, but when I uh, uh, define myself as learner, I'm very, very analytical, yeah? and that shows. I mean, at the end of this lecture, I don't know whether uh, what your expectations were, what your motivation was. So I don't, uh, I don't know what the degree of satisfaction at the end uh, is, but the satisfaction may not as high as I am hoping for. Because maybe I'm more analytical, more the type of learner in the right hand uh, corner than you. You may have come here uh, with another expectation from another uh, basic uh, uh, learning style. Maybe uh, uh, being within pr practitioners, uh, 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 you are the sort of common sense problem solver. And you may think that what I'm doing is too analytical and too abstract and not directly related to, to practice. I don't know. And well, unfortunately, uh, the situation here being a lecturer, uh, speaking, speaking, and, uh, and speaking, contradicts a little bit uh, the philosophy behind my PowerPoint. Well, that is, I think, an unfortunate situation that I'm now advocating something that I do not. Uh, realize in, in, in practice. So this could perhaps be better sort of Socratic uh, uh, meeting, me discussing with you, listening to you and sharing your, my ideas, you sharing your ideas with the group, but the setting is not uh, very favorable for this uh, sort of uh, exchange of ideas. The same with museums. And the same uh, with museums. They have their galleries, they have their permanent temporary uh, uh, galleries. And how, uh, how to, uh, to address these different learning styles? Well, we do have some uh, experiences in, in, in museums. In, in the Netherlands, uh, I was referring to the popularity of these ideas of, of Kolb. Uh, many museums have experimented with these ideas of Kolb, integrating uh, different learning styles in their exhibition. And one of the major uh, uh, museums, uh, major worldwide, uh, the Victoria and Albert Museum, uh, has some years ago, by redeveloping the British galleries, also implemented these ideas. Uh, uh, Kolb and, 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 and Gardner. Uh, Gardner is the man of the multiple intelligences. And in, and in this gallery, 
I don't know if you've ever been to the uh, Victor Helmet Museum uh, uh, recently, but this, this gallery is a very interesting example uh, of addressing uh, different types of people in different ways, a var variety of techniques. Uh, uh, for example, uh, here, uh, um, uh, here, two examples, two uh, faces, and the question, uh, which one is Wedgwood? So 18th century British, or which one is ancient Greeks, Greek, and spot the difference. So it's addressing another style of uh, uh, learning, giving clues and uh, in, um, inviting people to look, to make this comparison. And by doing so, uh, learning. Uh, in another example, uh, um, uh, Chinese or, 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 or English, uh, ceramic or porcelain, well, uh, earthenware or, or, or porcelain. And well, uh, you see there in the lower uh, uh, right hand uh, side, uh, please touch, well, outside the, the, the slide, uh, there are shards, the pieces of ceramic which you can touch. It connects uh, with this interactive way of, of learning. Uh, try. Crinoline, uh, try it and see uh, how, how does it feel and, and how much time does it take to dress yourself as a lady of the, what is it, 19th century. So this sort of interactivity uh, appeals to another type of uh, uh, learning. In this case, I'm very enthusiastic about this. But in this case, it, it, it's more about form than about content. So the connection that I would like to, to make, which in my reflection on learning in a museum, and experience in museum, um, uh, I would, uh, is to make the connection uh, with content. Rita uh, hostad uh, G, she is from uh, New York working in a science uh, a museum, um, made this distinction between aspects uh, from content point of view uh, uh, within the framework of the intrinsic extrinsic value of science between science as subjective process and science as objective uh, uh, product. That you make distinction between knowledge, uh, impact, issues, and people. And although I go over it very briefly, I hope you can, can follow what I would like to, uh, to, 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 to tell you, that it, it is important, I think, that we make a connection between not just the method of transferring knowledge, but also the content of knowledge itself, that make connection with learning uh, uh, styles. Uh, that uh, people with specific learning style may be interested in other types of information, not how this information is presented, but also uh, the content, the very content of this information. Of course, it is not in itself not very new. Uh, there's some sort of professional intuition uh, that some museums are already developing their programs into this direction. What may be new is, is rationalizing uh, it and, and making more explicit uh, uh, strategy from our side. But here's an, uh, a museum in, in Italy, in, in, in Bergamo, where also teaching at the uh, universities, so or is a museum that I found purely by, by, by coincidence. But it is a museum, but almost intu intu intuitively um, uh, found a way of addressing uh, different learning styles, different ways how people um, uh, learn with different contents. Uh, and relating to the model uh, of the, the slide I just presented, uh, you see on the, right, the upper right hand uh, corner is the traditional approach of natural history museums. Uh, it's a classification, a uh, series of animals, uh, uh, birds, mammals, uh, according to Linnaean classification principles. 
a very rational, uh, very much uh, uh, focusing uh, on um, uh, 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 knowledge. What is it? Uh, uh, but uh, uh, under the, the right, uh, uh, right hand uh, uh, corner, uh, that's completely different, so a different sort of approach without different uh, uh, content. It's about uh, ecology, it's about uh, what in the diagram uh, was identified as, as impact. Yeah? What is the impact of human behavior on nature, uh, on the uh, biodiversity? Uh, uh, then the uh, uh, left hand, the lower left hand uh, uh, corner, it's about the use of uh, uh, geological material, the, the use of, of, of stones, minerals, uh, in, uh, uh, in, in churches, for example. They, 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 they show uh, the uh, sort of stones, uh, the rocks that can be found in the environment and how they are used uh, in public buildings in the city of uh, Bergamo. Uh, and uh, finally, uh, the uh, upper uh, left hand uh, corner, it's about the geologist and the paleontologist. Uh, who are they? How do they uh, uh, work? So more personal histories of the people behind the collections. So uh, what I would like to, to advocate is making connections, making connections between this model of, of, of learning styles, learning strategies, and uh, this modeling of, um, of, of content. And to, to, to give another example from the publications of uh, Rita Mukherjee, uh, AIDS, for example. AIDS is an important uh, topic in, in, in society. And AIDS has different components. So it's, it's saying that museums uh, should, uh, that is the assumption behind it, that museums should address uh, the socially relevant uh, theme, AIDS. But a museum can address that in uh, different ways. Uh, a museum can make an exhibition about AIDS in terms of medical knowledge. What is it? And how perhaps we can, can treat it. But as you know, and that's why I'm using this example, uh, it, it uh, has had, uh, perhaps had more than, than has, since all these medicines that are becoming available, um, uh, but it, it, it had an huge social impact in our part of the world, uh, but in particular in, in Africa, of course. And looking at the social impact, this is, of course, a different sort of topic appealing uh, first to uh, a different style of, of, of learner. Uh, the style of learning here is the common sense problem solver. What is the social impact and what can we do uh, it? And issues, yeah, there, there, there is an, a dimension in, in AIDS, uh, uh, especially when we look at AIDS in Africa, of industry, of politic, politics. Uh, you remember that uh, the uh, former uh, president uh, of South Africa uh, uh, talked about AIDS as a problem of poverty uh, rather than another sort of, uh, of, of a problem. And then finally, uh, uh, people seeking personal meaning uh, are interested in personal histories. Uh, people that are suffering uh, AIDS uh, or uh, people with relatives uh, dealing with, uh, uh, age, uh, with AIDS. Uh, now, I'm not saying that uh, you should have four different exhibitions and that you first do a test with your visitors, saying, OK, uh, you are learning style one, so you should go in that direction. You are learning style two, and uh, you should go in that direction. That's not, of course, what I uh, want to, to suggest. But what I do uh, suggest uh, is that we uh, uh, keep in mind uh, that there are these different interests, different approaches, different motivation, different expectations, and that we should develop different ways to meet these expectations. And it is always a sort of continuous process. People may start in, in, in one area and move to another area. Uh, uh, people interested in, in personal uh, histories, they would not stay there. Uh, they uh, may go into a sort of uh, circle, that's uh, the idea of um, of, of David Cobb, uh, that, that learning is, is, is a process going in a sort of circle, going from uh, one approach uh, gradually in, uh, to another, but the learner then decides uh, which 
a, a route he or she should follow. Um, almost coming to an end, I would also advocate a sort of approach where we connect uh, this modeling to one of the major issues nowadays in museum work, uh, participation. I think uh, that modeling uh, uh, motivations, uh, uh, expectations, uh, satisfaction modeling, uh, museum offerings in this way also help us uh, to be more effective when it comes to inviting uh, people to participate. And, and a key publication uh, here uh, is uh, a publication by Naina Simon, the Participatory Museum. You, uh, if you're uh, involved in education in museums. You will probably have heard about it because uh, uh, everybody seems to uh, refer to Naina uh, uh, Simon. She's a very interesting uh, uh, personality and this book is one of the uh, most influential books uh, uh, in museum work uh, of the last um, uh, few uh, years. You can find it on the internet. You can uh, read it for free on the internet of you can download, it, uh, download a digital version for a few uh, uh, do dollars. So um, there is um, not a certain barrier not to uh, uh, read it. Um, and and, and well, her idea is that the museum, by definition, should be participatory. And that a museum, by definition, uh, should invite communities uh, 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 individuals and group, groups uh, to participate in, in, in museum work. Uh, but uh, participating people in museum work uh, uh, should, in my opinion, uh, be, be structured. That may uh, be contradictory to a, a constructivist uh, a approach to participation, but nevertheless you help uh, uh, people, then you provide some sort of framework. And again, uh, some people uh, might be more uh, interested in uh, contributing uh, to a knowledge uh, element where others are more interested in being involved in a personal uh, histories sort of component. Uh, uh, so uh, I think that we uh, could um, uh, develop this idea of, of, of participation uh, in the direction that I just uh, indicated. And being involved as a visitor, in some way or another, or being involved as audience, and not necessarily as, as visitor, I think is a component uh, of the concept of flow. Uh, Mihaly, Sixtet Mihaly, is uh, the, the father uh, of the concept of flow. And I think everything that I presented to you, despite its rationality, despite its modeling, contributes to a better understanding or a better implementing of this concept of uh, flow. That, on the one hand, you have this challenge being uh, the museum offering, and on the other hand, you have the skills uh, being this learning strategy and, and, and the way, uh, in trans narrative, the way how people uh, cope with information. And I think we can enrich this relation between challenge at the one hand and skills at the other hand by applying ideas as I tried uh, uh, to uh, present to do uh, the last uh, uh, one hour and 50 minutes uh, or, or so. And what we should avoid is apathy here in this model. We should avoid apathy. We should avoid anxiety. We should avoid boredom. Uh, boredom when our skills are much more developed than what the museum presents. Uh, that happens too often. Uh, too often uh, uh, you, under, uh, no, you, they, underestimate uh, the skills of the uh, visitor. But on the other hand, you should also not overestimate the skills of your visitor. So you, find, you need to find a, a balance. Uh, and these models about learning strategies help uh, to find uh, a balance uh, uh, concerning the skills and what you uh, offer. And the ideal uh, would be to develop from apathy, low challenge, 
those skills into flow. An experience that is uh, worthwhile, an experience that brings people into sort of well, other level of consciousness, that is a little bit uh, well, too poetic, I think, but uh, still I think uh, uh, our aim should be uh, to work with uh, our, our visitor, uh, to have a sort of flow in this interaction between us as museums, museum uh, uh, professionals uh, and the visitor. That does not necessarily mean uh, that we only have to show very positive and nice and friendly things. Uh, that is, I think, a wrong interpretation of uh, this, this diagram. Uh, very often uh, uh, it is suggested that everything that we present should be uh, without, uh, without conflicts. Uh, without problems. Uh, the, uh, sometimes it's suggested uh, that flow is related to a very easy, nice, sort of McDonald's world. No, that is not what I want to say. And if I return uh, to this idea of heterotopia of Michel Foucault, Foucault said there are two types of heterotopias. A heterotopia of orderliness, uh, the McDonald's uh, heterotopia, uh, a world, uh, Disneyland, uh, a world without problems, everything nice, uh, no controversy. And he said, well, there's also another heterotopia, the heterotopia of disarray, conflict, uh, and which he says, well, is the, uh, is a, uh, the brothel, uh, the whole house is a metaphor for this. Well, I'm not suggesting that we should turn our museums in whole houses. Um, but I think uh, it should not always be nice and kind and friendly. Uh, also, uh, controversy, uh, contested uh, exhibitions may bring people in a flow, people may be uh, fascinated uh, by, by it. Because I'm coming back to my very first point, the experience is learning, but it's also something extra. And so the extra is perhaps here in this last slide, this Natural History Museum in, in Paris. Yeah? It is about evolution. It is about biodiversity. It is about geography. But it is more. It is uh, providing you a sort of excitement. Uh, the, uh, it's a scenographer who made it. Uh, a scenographer uh, that adds an element, uh, the element that I am uh, uh, looking for. Uh, beyond the models, uh, beyond uh, the controversies, uh, this is excitement uh, that I think helps us, helps us to engage with the very uh, important and valuable, valuable information that museums have to share. Thank you very much.